name is Justin Maxwell. Uh, let me switch over to the first slide here. And I am one of the technical support managers on our uh, software support team. So we've got uh, a team of going on 30 people that work on technical support. So if you've ever uh, had to call in uh, or, or talk to anybody on support, I hope I've gotten the chance to talk to you before. If not, uh, give us a call. We can help you out, hopefully, <laughs> uh, on, on anything related to SOLIDWORKS. Uh, I know we're spread out across the country. I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, so I'll give you a general idea of where I'm from. Um, so I'd like to start off by saying go Browns this weekend. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we are in the playoffs for the first time in uh, a lot of years. I think it's like 17 or something years. So uh, it's been a while and uh, and we're, we're all excited here in Cleveland. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, what my presentation today is about is uh, planning your SOLIDWORKS upgrade. And then we're going to talk about uh, some common mistakes and how to avoid them. And then there's a couple other things I've thrown in there, like some common slowdowns that people run into and just some general things that we look at on a support side of things, uh, just because I'm coming from that technical support perspective. So I guess the first question that people ask me, uh, and it's usually around this time of the year, is why should I upgrade, right? You, you, you're using SOLIDWORKS 2020 or maybe 2019, everything's fine. And then around this time of the year, or maybe a couple months ago, you get these pop-ups at the bottom of your screen saying, hey, a new SOLIDWORKS version is available for download. Uh, click on the icon for options. So it gives you some download options. And maybe you're one of those people that say, sure, let's do it. Let's go to the next version, right? And upgrade yourself to 2021 uh, this year. So I guess the biggest question you're gonna ask is why, right? Why should we upgrade to that newer version? And there's a ton of reasons of why you should upgrade. Um, the biggest one that I usually try to, uh, to convey is there are a ton of new features every year. There is a what's new document that we get a couple months before it comes out when like beta is being tested and it is hundreds of pages long of updates and new features, uh, new fixes and things like that, that can improve uh, your daily work and your daily life using SOLIDWORKS. So new features is one of the biggest things. Uh, that's, a, that's a big reason of why you should upgrade. Another reason is all the bug fixes. Again, this is showing a list of some bug fixes from a specific service pack of 2019. Uh, these are SPRs, so they're bug reports that customers have sent to somebody like me on support. I've escalated that to SOLIDWORKS, and now it's on a developer's plate, and uh, that's what an SPR is. These numbers, as you can see on the left of that chart, go back to the tens of thousands and into the, into the millions now of random found things in the software, and every service pack update has those bug fixes in them. If you're attached to an SPR, you actually get an email that tells you, hey, this one's been fixed in this specific version in the future. So a lot of people are waiting for those updates to come so they can download and get their specific bug that they found fixed. Uh, it's kind of a cool feeling to get your specific thing fixed sometimes, uh, especially if it's something critical or, or something like that. Another reason is to just stay up to date. Maybe you have a new nice 4K screen or a, or a touch screen laptop or something like that. Right. You want to have if, if you have the best hardware, you want to have the best software as well. Well, all of these things are taken into consideration as SOLIDWORKS is updated. So you want to have matching software to to hardware. So that's an important reason. If you're upgrading your computers, you should also be upgrading your software as well. Um, we we sometimes have customers that are still using very old versions of SOLIDWORKS and that's fine. You can. But if you start upgrading your computer, your hardware, now you're on hardware that isn't even it wasn't even known that it existed when that version of SOLIDWORKS was out, right? So sometimes you run into issues if you're uh, not kind of upgrading simultaneously. A huge reason is better performance. That what's new document I was talking about, not only is it new features, but it also talks about all the increases in performance. So we get, we get uh, charts that show how quickly things are done in the newer version versus an older version. Um, like if uh, you say you open up a drawing that's a large drawing and it takes 10 minutes to open in 2019, that could open in four minutes in 2021 or, or even less, depending on the options that you choose. 
So there's a there's a huge performance increase usually with that upgrade. And then my biggest reason of upgrading is you're on subscription. And this is for the customers that are watching that do pay for your annual maintenance of SolidWorks. You're paying for those upgrades. Uh, if I was paying something yearly, right, or something like that, I'd probably want to be upgrading as well. That's part of the, the, the subscription cost is that new version. So um, that's probably my biggest reason of if I was a, a, a customer of SolidWorks, I'd be upgrading every year as well, just because that's part of the, that's part of the process. That's part of the, uh, the thing that I'm paying for. Another question that comes up a lot on technical support in this time of year is when should I upgrade? Right. So if you understand why you should upgrade, the second question is probably, OK, when should I upgrade? Do I do it right in October? Well, that's kind of a loaded question. It depends on the company and, and your personal preferences. But if you'd like to see what it kind of looks like on our end, our customers, uh, this is a chart of our customers and our cases in our internal technical support of when upgrades uh, are coming in as issues or uh, people asking for help from our support team. So you can actually see, this is interesting because the calendar year starts at October on the left. And that's because that is when the new versions are released in October. You'll also notice that's at the very far bottom of when people are calling us asking for upgrade help. So the first couple days of, a, of an initial release, there's not a lot of people uh, that are upgrading right away. And then the peak is actually the first week of the year. And we had that exact same peak uh, this year where this, these are last year's numbers, but this year mimicked it exactly, um, where the first week is everybody uh, upgrading, everyone installing to that new version and calling and asking for, for help or assistance or whatever, whatever it is. Uh, and then as the year progresses, we slowly taper back down to that lower number, and then it peaks again after October of the next year. So uh, if you want to do kind of the the what the average customer does that's installing around the late january early or late december early january time frame uh, and then a ton of customers still upgrade or install past that as well but again that's something that you're going to want to uh, look into specifically in your case and we'll talk about some reasons why you should wait or maybe you shouldn't wait on on upgrading all right so that's some common questions uh when and why so let's go ahead and talk about some common mistakes. And I've actually got a list of the 10 most common mistakes that customers or, or anyone, um, this isn't limited to just customers, but sometimes it's people like me or my team as well, uh, mistakes that we make uh, during a SolidWorks installation. The first one is actually my biggest one, my most valuable one. And this mistake is done by a huge percentage of customers. Uh, it's something that we battle with every single day, and that is if you start an upgrade without any form of testing at all on your end. We, we try to push it so hard, um, you definitely should test upgrading. Now, that's not easy. Uh, it's definitely something that uh, you can't just do during your, work, your, during your work life, right? You're probably busy. Trying to upgrade a specific machine to test is probably difficult to do but it is so important. Um, the first reason is you want to test your files and your most critical needs. So if you do a specific workflow every single day and now you just change the software and that specific workflow has now changed a bit because of maybe a new feature or an update or maybe there's a bug, that could hopefully be found during a testing process, and then we can try to fix it before you've now upgraded everyone to that new version. So this is a way to catch those just-in-case things that uh, you might not see. So the first thing I would recommend, test your daily workflow, your largest files or your most critical needs, things like that that you do every single day. Test them on the new, on the new version before you upgrade to that new version. So install it on one machine, play with your workflow. If it doesn't work, then we have something to fix for you. Uh, you wanna also test your hardware or your third-party programs that work with SOLIDWORKS. So 
say you have Mastercam installed and you use that uh, alongside SolidWorks, but there's add-ins and things that integrate with SolidWorks. There's probably new versions of that software, but they could be on a different upgrade schedule than SolidWorks. So you want to test your specific applications that you use with SolidWorks. Another big thing is your environment. It's different than everyone else's. You have uh, specific network conditions, specific antivirus programs, uh, different IT restrictions and things like that. That could play a role in SOLIDWORKS working as it should. So again, test it in your specific environment. That's something that I can't tell you on support. Will it work in my environment? I think so, um, but we should probably test it to, to double check. You also want to check out the What's New guide because there are some new features that may apply to your specific workflow. Uh, a lot of times people don't even realize that there's a new feature in, say, Sheet Metal, and they use Sheet Metal every single day. So uh, test some of those new features out. For example, here's the uh, here's a What's New. Oops, I didn't go to the next slide here. Here's some of the top enhancements of 2021. So you can see at the top, there's a detailing mode, which is a drawing uh, update. There's assembly updates, where you can change mate alignments on edits. Uh, there's a user interface changes. And at the bottom, there's some part and features with like edge flanges on uh, non-planar tangent edges and sheet metal. So these things don't apply to everyone, right? If you're a mold maker, you're probably not going to care about an edge flange update. But uh, if you do do edge flanges all the time, then maybe that could be a complete game changer to you. So test those out, uh, especially right now when they're brand new features. They haven't been tested out by hundreds of thousands of people yet. Uh, so now's the time. The other thing is you want to review the system requirements. This one's really important, uh, and a lot of people don't take the time to look at this stuff. Uh, so in terms of system requirements, this is just from the SOLIDWORKS website, but you can see these green checks and red X's, meaning uh, certain versions of Windows or servers no longer work in 2021. So the big one to look at right there is Windows 7, Service Pack 1. Totally fine to be on Windows 7 with SOLIDWORKS 2020, but you cannot be using Windows 7 SP1 with 2021. So the end of life was 2020 SP5. <clears throat> so that's a big thing to to take in consideration, if you've got clients that are still on Windows 7, uh, you will not be able to install 2021 on those. And if that's something that you didn't look at beforehand, right, that's something that you can miss. So you always want to review those system requirements. Another big one that we keep on seeing is a lot of people are still uh, on Windows Server 2012. Uh, R2 was good through 2019 of SOLIDWORKS, but starting in 2020 and in 2021, we cannot use that Windows Server 2012. So that means if you have a license manager <clears throat> that's running on a server that's maybe a virtual server or something like that, you do need to get that upgraded to at least Server 2016. Now, this stuff, if you haven't seen that before, it might be surprising, but all this stuff is available uh, years in advance on the SOLIDWORKS website. So there is a support lifecycle page on that website. And you can see here for Windows 7, uh, and this has probably been up since I would say 2018, they knew 2020 SP5 was going to be the end of support for Windows 7. So this stuff is well documented and it also matches uh, Microsoft. So if Microsoft doesn't support Windows 7 anymore, SOLIDWORKS will no longer support it as a, an available operating system either. Now, there are ways around this on support, but this is the official, is it, is it uh, uh, able to run on it? Like SOLIDWORKS will not uh, support something that's in an unsupported environment. Uh, another big one that's going to catch some people is all the way down here, Word 2013 is also past its end of life. So Microsoft has stopped supporting Excel and Word 2013. So SOLIDWORKS is no longer going to support that as well. Uh, if you upgrade SOLIDWORKS to 2021 and it sees you have Excel and Word 2013 installed, it will warn you and tell you, hey, um, you, shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't be going there. Uh, and then also SQL Server, 
Uh, if you do use PDM or electrical, SQL Server uh, is 2014. Its end of life is the end of this year. So you can see next year we would require SQL Server uh, 2016 or newer. So just something to, to take a look at while you're going through your planning of upgrading is just those normal system requirements and uh, and when life cycles might be might be ending. <clears throat> a couple other factors with system requirements is if you are using uh, a virtual environment, that's something that is becoming more and more common. The big thing is right here, this little list on the left, that's what, five different programs, five different uh, hypervisors or virtual environments, that's it. So if you have some other virtual environment and you're using SOLIDWORKS, it's not in a supported environment. And, uh, and that, does, that means it might not be able to install at all, or it installs, but something goes wrong. Uh, if you call support or we get SOLIDWORKS to look at that specific case, we might not be able to do anything because it's in a completely unsupported and untested environment. So another thing to plan. Uh, the other thing that's kind of changed over the years is SOLIDWORKS support of antivirus softwares. Um, there used to be, and by used to be, I mean like five or six years ago, there used to be a list of antivirus programs that were specifically tested by SOLIDWORKS. But there are so many antivirus programs out there um, that SOLIDWORKS doesn't do that specific test anymore. What they do do is they, uh, they give us a, a couple tips uh, and some uh, tricks to do to help SOLIDWORKS work around your antivirus software. Uh, the two biggest ones are this one here. In case you have PDM, do not have antivirus running on the PDM Vault server. That's just going to slow things down and, and be an issue in the future. And then also uh, consider creating exemption, exemptions for SOLIDWORKS file types. Uh, and that's on any machine. So if you have antivirus running and you can exempt the SLD PRT file type from being looked at, then that's only going to speed things up for SOLIDWORKS. So um, this would be, again, something that might be caught with uh, with testing. But really, this just goes into while you're planning, make sure you review those system requirements as closely as you can and you look at all the details um, because some of this stuff sometimes changes over the years. All right. So number one was upgrading without testing. Number two gets into that question that I, I, I proposed earlier of when to upgrade. Because the number two thing is upgrading too early. Um, I've been this person before, and that's the person that you see that pop up and you upgrade right away uh, without considering everyone else that works at your company or the customers and suppliers that you work with every day. So really, the safest, the safest option is after you test to upgrade everyone at the same time. Uh, go from every single person, go from 2020 to 2021 hopefully that same day or maybe that same weekend if you have a very large company. The biggest reason is if a 2020 file gets saved in 2021, it is now permanently a 21 file forever. There is no going back and saving it as a 20 file. That just doesn't exist in 3D CAD, uh, that backwards compatibility. Now, 2020 SP5 can open 2021 files, uh, but it's it's kind of the same thing as opening a step file or a CAD neutral format of some type. It's like a very basic file with no structure to it and not really what you want to be doing uh, in the work environment, maybe for testing and stuff. But uh, if it's your file that you've been working on for six months and now it's upgraded to a version and you can't edit it for the moment until you upgrade, then you're in a you're in a bad situation. So you don't want to be that user that upgraded before everyone else without telling anyone. <laughs> you don't want to be the person that accidentally updated files to the newest version, and now everyone has to upgrade only because that file is so important. Um, the other thing that I noted in here is check with your customers uh, or your suppliers. If you transfer files back and forth between people, then that's an important thing to be on the same version. So you don't want to upgrade before them uh, unless that scenario works. Uh, you know, in your specific case. Of, of course, customers can work with different versions between themselves, but it does make things a little bit more complicated. So I would consider that before upgrading. Maybe talk to a supplier that sends you files or vice versa and make sure that they're planning on upgrading around the same time. 
interesting uh, enough, my next number three, uh, my next uh, common mistake is upgrading too late. Now, you kind of wonder, what does that mean? How could you upgrade too late? The biggest thing is if you do find an issue. If you find a bug, it's a lot more likely to be fixed if it's found earlier in the year. And what I mean by that is, if you wait until service pack four or five to upgrade to 2021, and then you find a critical bug that stops you from working or, uh, or does something that completely changes your workflow, it's not likely that SolidWorks is gonna be able to fix it in the one more month they have of 2021. Sure, it's somewhat likely that someone else maybe found that bug, but I learn every single day talking to customers that everyone does things a little differently. So it's very possible that nobody else that uses SolidWorks does the same thing that you do. And if that's the case and you find a bug that breaks what you do and it's late in the year, then it's probably not going to be fixed until the next version. And it's a, it's a big ordeal. But in the beginning of the year, say testing, um, right in the beginning, you find a bug or maybe you didn't find it in testing but you're still in service pack one and you found something that is is annoying or, or breaks it a little bit, we can most likely fix it this year by getting that to SolidWorks. And if it's something critical, we can escalate it uh, and have SolidWorks fix it like in some type of hot fix or something. But those are very hard to get to when it's later in the year. So I wouldn't recommend waiting until service pack five or even four. I'd upgrade uh, as soon as your testing is done is, is what I always recommend. So that's kind of my answer to the question of when is there's no perfect date. Uh, I would test it and if it tests out okay, then do the upgrade. Uh, the other big thing is you could be missing out on time saving features or fixes. So again, things are changing every year. If you use sheet metal and there's a brand new sheet metal feature out there that totally fixes or changes your workflow for the better, why would you wait the whole year? to uh you know to to download and get to that new version you're wasting a lot of time basically <laughs> if you don't upgrade that as soon as you can all right number four uh, of common mistakes that are uh done during installations is forgetting about pdm so pdm is becoming more and more common with all of our customers and that's because of uh pdm standard that remember if uh, if you didn't know this pdm standard comes free with SOLIDWORKS Professional or higher. So if you have Professional or Premium, you get PDM Standard. Now, if you have PDM, you need to upgrade that at the same time you're upgrading SOLIDWORKS. That's extremely important uh, because you cannot have a SOLIDWORKS seat be newer than your PDM uh, seats. And that's by major release, not service pack. This is all about upgrading from 2020 to 2021. So you can't have, say, SOLIDWORKS on 2021 and your PDM still sitting at 2019. PDM works with your file relationships and it looks at the assemblies and drawings and all that stuff. And that's all dependent on the version that you're in. Uh, and that changes from year to year. So a 2019 PDM has no idea how a 2021 assembly file works. It's basically the same, but there could be a significant change. Uh, and SOLIDWORKS does not build that in. That, that, functionality to look into the future so far. So uh, that's a big thing. If you have PDM, you need to upgrade both of them at the same time, or else you get in a very sticky situation um, that hopefully we can help you with. Um, and the people that could definitely help you with that is our inflow team. Uh, so if you are going to be upgrading PDM, I would suggest giving uh, uh, our inflow team a call. They work specifically with data management software, and they have a lot of uh, information about that upgrade process. It's a lot more in depth and uh, and involved than a normal SolidWorks upgrade. So you're going to want to call Inflow um, or your reseller and ask about uh, about how PDM should be upgraded in your case. Number five is something that's maybe not necessarily during the upgrade, but it's something that happens right away and that is upgrading your graphics driver. So uh, graphics cards get updated, um, graphics drivers get updated even more frequently, and SolidWorks uh, tests 
all of those things with every single version. So new cards and new drivers are tested with all the new versions. When you upgrade from 20 to 21, as an example, there's probably going to be a new graphics driver that's supported in that new version that wasn't supported in the old version. So uh, each version has its own requirements. There's a couple ways to test uh, if you need to upgrade that graphics driver. The first one would be looking at the, uh, the SOLIDWORKS RX tool. So that's just in your start menu of Windows, SOLIDWORKS RX. That'll tell you if there is an update available to your graphics driver. It matches it to your card that you have installed, so it looks at the hardware, and it looks at what version of SOLIDWORKS you have installed, and it tells you what the, uh, the best driver in your situation is. So it looks something like this, where I'll pop up what mine looks like. So it looks something like this. In the Diagnostics tab, you can see that my computer uh, says, hey, your current driver is certified, but it's for an older release of SOLIDWORKS. So this would be if you upgraded to, say, 2021, and you didn't upgrade your driver yet, you'll probably get a message like this. Now, the nice thing is there's a little button that says download the latest driver. Right? You can just click on that button right there in the middle of your screen, and it will download that driver. You can then install it. And then hopefully you get a green check like this that says your graphics card is supported and the driver is up to date. That's what you want to see uh, when you look at uh, the RX tool. Now you can also check on just SOLIDWORKS.com. There are, there's a graphics requirement page uh, and you can also download uh, graphics drivers from that site as well. That one's a little different. You fill out a little form that you say what uh, what computer you have because it, it can't recognize your hardware through the uh, through the web browser, but it'll also give you a link to download that same driver. <clears throat> a lot of new drivers now, though, uh, they say uh, this R430 branch or some type of branch instead. Um, that means that SOLIDWORKS has tested a full branch of drivers, and you can download any of those drivers. So it's usually recommended to download the newest one. And that looks a little different than the older process. Uh, I think I captured it here of what that process looks like. So you can go on that NVIDIA website by clicking on that link on, on that last page I showed you. And then you again fill out a little form of what kind of computer you have. So I'll say I have a Quadro notebook and I have a Quadro P4000 card, my operating system. I click on search here. And then it lists a bunch of different drivers. Uh, and you can see on the right, there's that branch number, that R390. Now, there's a bunch of different versions, but uh, SOLIDWORKS is saying that all of those will work. So you download one of those drivers, uh, and it's the same kind of process that, uh, that works in all the other situations. So it looks a little different now um, than it used to with just one specific driver. Now we have these branches as well that are also uh, approved. Uh, instead, so if you do see that branch, it's not it's not so crazy. It's just a it's just a different way of getting to the to the same information. <clears throat> All right. So number five was uh, was not upgrading your graphics driver. Number six is not upgrading or missing your toolbox during the upgrade. So this has happened to countless customers. A customer calls in. They say, "Hey, I got this pop up when I try to launch SolidWorks, and it looks a." Uh, Something like this. It says, hey, the whole wizard advanced whole database is not the expected version. And then it tells you at the bottom what the current version is and what it thinks you should be going or you should be in. Uh, there's an easy way to, to fix this. Um, and that is, uh, there's a couple different ways. One is it can upgrade alongside uh, SOLIDWORKS just during a normal upgrade. But also you can go into your, uh, into your computer and you can upgrade the toolbox using a program that is buried inside the install directory. So what I would say is if you do see a pop-up like this, give SOLIDWORKS a call, or I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry, not SOLIDWORKS, but your reseller, somebody like, a, like me or my team, and we can help you get to that newest version of the toolbox. Uh, inside of SOLIDWORKS, by clicking on the option of Whole Wizard Toolbox, it'll actually pop up and tell you that, hey, it's not the right version. Sometimes you have the right version installed, it's just not selected. So you just have to find that right version and hit OK, and then that fixes your, your problem. So sometimes it's just as easy as you did install Toolbox, but you just your, your SOLIDWORKS isn't pointed to that Toolbox yet. All right, number seven is not adjusting any of the installation options. 
This one is kind of nitpicky, but it's something that I do on every single install that I've ever uh, been involved in. Even if I'm just helping out somebody and I'm not really doing the install, I'm still going to push this when I'm doing uh, any type of help because I think it's that important. So when you are in the installation manager, you get prompted a bunch of questions. Uh, and a lot of people just hit next, next, next install, right? And then they, they finish the install out and they're good to go. And sure, that probably works, but it could actually leave a headache in the future uh, that you could avoid by just messing with a couple options. Uh, the first one is the background downloader. Now the background downloader is an application that can, is gonna run in your task pane down at the bottom of your computer. It's gonna recognize when a new version of SOLIDWORKS is installed, or I'm not sorry, not installed, but available. And then it's gonna automatically download it uh, in the background, right? So sure, it could help out, but it's a process that's running on everybody's machine uh, if you have this on. And then the day that something is released by SOLIDWORKS, all of your computers are now updating and trying to download at the same time. It could cripple your internet uh, or, or cause some adverse reactions. So I actually recommend usually turning this off, the background downloader. You can still see when a new version is installed, um, but it's not going to automatically download it uh, every single time a new version is out there. The other thing I like to do is mess with the installation location uh, and, and modify this to a specific folder that's named SOLIDWORKS 2020 or 2021 or whatever version it is. As you can see here, I have the installation location uh, typed out as SOLIDWORKS 2019. By default, it's SOLIDWORKS Corp. And then every single time you upgrade, it just adds a parenthesis one or a parenthesis two to that. So it could last, uh, you could have Corp 1, Corp 2, Corp 3, Corp 4. And every year that is a new folder that gets added. If you have to, I don't know, troubleshoot an issue or anything that we have to go into your uh, installation directory, it's kind of hard to find if they're all the same name. So I always modify my installation location by hitting that change button and just typing in SOLIDWORKS 2019 instead of SOLIDWORKS Corp. So it's a completely separate folder than all the other versions installed on your machine. The other thing I do is the same exact thing, but with the toolbox. Instead of it just being called SOLIDWORKS Data, I make it SOLIDWORKS Data 2019. The biggest reason I've always done this is because I have everything from, I don't know, 2016 to 2021 on my computer. Uh, I need all of those separate, but I do this the same way on any customer's machine as well. It's much better to have those things separated, uh, and it just adds a, a form of clarity when you're trying to do any type of... Uh, uh, management of your files. Number eight is after the install, not touching any of the system options. Uh, a big one here is people call in all the time and they say that they have a, a symbol library missing, right? They just upgraded to 2021. And instead of seeing the diameter symbol, it says like a text uh, tag that says MOD DIAM is like a, a very typical one that people see a lot. And that's because the symbol library is probably still pointing to the old version uh, or the old file directory. And that file directory might not even exist anymore. It just got upgraded to the new version. So the way to fix that is go into your system options of SOLIDWORKS, go into file locations right here on the left in your system options. And then when you're in here, you can hit edit all. So this is showing all of your system options, all the file locations that it's pointing for any options on your machine. By hitting edit all, it pops up this big screen that shows all of the file locations. And the thing I like to do is they added this fi uh, find and replace command at the bottom left of this. If you click on that find and replace, you can say find anywhere that it currently says 2020 and replace it with 2021. So any file location that says 2020, change it to now say 2021, and then you can hit replace all and that finds everywhere in your options that was pointing to something that said 2020, and it changes it to 2021. If you followed my naming convention, then now everything will work perfectly. So uh, this is, an, again, something I do on so many people's computers. If, if they call in and they say uh, that something's broken, I look through this uh, file location list, and I usually just do a replace all from whatever their old version is to their new version, and it usually fixes all of their issues in a couple of clicks and looks really impressive. So <laughs> that's a nice trick to keep in the book if, uh, if you do have somebody upgrade or you upgrade yourself 
and uh, and something's not working right, it might just be a simple system option. All right. Number nine of common mistakes is forgetting about the server. This one happens if you are in a network environment. So if you have a shared license of, of SolidWorks and you have a network license, then that license manager actually needs to be updated before any of the clients. So a license manager is backwards compatible, but it's not forward compatible. So your specific seed of SolidWorks cannot be newer than the server. That's when that server 2012 comes into play that we talked about in the very beginning of this webinar. Uh, you need to make sure that that stuff is taken care of before you upgrade the clients. And then after it's upgraded, you need to make sure you activate it. Uh, so a lot of people will upgrade the server and they'll forget to activate it, which pulls the newest license file. All you do is launch it once. It tells you, hey, do you want to activate it? You hit yes, and then that's it. You never have to touch it again until the next time you upgrade. Uh, as long as you don't need to you know, access it for options or whatever. Uh, and then the good thing is all the older clients are still going to work with that newer license manager. So upgrade the license manager first and then go back and start upgrading the, uh, the client machines or the computers that actually are running SOLIDWORKS. That's a big one. And you'd be surprised how often somebody calls and say, hey, I upgraded 2021 and I can't open it. It says license file or license can't be found. What's going on? And all it is is a really quick upgrade of the, of the license manager. Um, but if that requires, say, IT or something to access the server, then you could be down for a day. So this is definitely something to, uh, to look at. And number 10 is not asking for help. So if you do have any problems, uh, run into anything that slows you down or ha if you have any questions, make sure you call us or call your reseller. Um, the biggest thing is SolidWorks supports customers' activation and installation issues, whether or not you're on maintenance. So you don't have to be paying for support to call us and say you can't uh, install or can't activate. We will help anybody that's having that kind of issue. Um, so if you do have any issue at all installing, please call, ask for help, and we can help you out. Um, definitely, that's that's kind of our specialty is installation stuff. Um, so give us a call if there's anything that ever comes up. So that's the common mistakes that people make. I wanted to end this with a quick list of things that can slow you down. So these are kind of like some tips and tricks of, uh, of going through an install that can help you out along the way. So what can slow you down during an install? The first thing, that people call about is pop-up errors during an install. Now, a really, really common one that has driven me crazy for years, and you've probably seen it yourself, is this one here. A Windows reboot is pending from a previous installation. Continue the installation, okay. You hit okay every single time. This is something that's basically a bug. It's been popping up and it, it doesn't trigger right that your computer could have just rebooted. It doesn't actually realize that your computer has been rebooted. And this pops up all the time. It doesn't do anything, and it doesn't slow down the install as long as you hit OK. But if you didn't know this, you might be worried, like, hey, is this going to not work? It specifically says we strongly recommend, and some components may fail to install. It's, like, worded really strongly, but it actually doesn't. It pops up for everyone. <laughs> So uh, if you do get a message like this, just hit OK, you're fine. If you want to call us and make sure, we can help you uh, get through it. But anybody on our support team is just going to hit OK here and not even read it because it's something that pops up for pretty much everybody. Another thing that can slow you down that a lot of people do is installing products that you don't need or use. Uh, so, for example, if you go into the installation manager up here, you can see products. It's this huge list that you have to scroll through. And a lot of people don't realize they can hit this change button. When you hit that change button, it pops up another screen that lists all of those products you're installing with check boxes next to them. Uh, a lot of the stuff comes free with SOLIDWORKS. I don't know if you've looked uh, you know, the last couple of years, but you get things like CAM and, um, and other programs like Composer Player things like that that come alongside SOLIDWORKS and they're, they're just free add-in programs that you may or may not ever touch. Uh, if you know you're not going to use it, then uncheck it. There's no point in slowing down your install and, and adding more information to your hard drive than you need. So I would install what you use uh, and, and uncheck the things that you definitely are not going to use. Another trick uh, 
is using a non-admin account. So you always want to use an admin privileged account when you're installing software on your computer. But specifically with SolidWorks, there's so much stuff in your registry that's settings and options and stuff. We need admin level privileges during an installation. Uh, so if you're trying to install and you don't have an admin account in your machine, uh, one quick way of getting to that is if you shift right click on the executable file, you can say run as administrator, and then it'll ask you to log in as that admin. So it's just a quick way of like temporarily using an admin account uh, to, to then install. But this is highly recommended, is running as an administrator. You can run into issues if you don't run as an admin account. Another common thing that slows a lot of companies down is downloading individually on every single machine. So everyone gets an update. Hey, it's time to go to 2021. Start up this installation wizard and download it and install it. That's every single computer downloading the same files over and over and over and over. If you've got 30 machines all using SOLIDWORKS, that's a lot of internet usage, a lot of data, and it can slow you down a lot. The trick is when you start up the installation manager, instead of hitting like install now, there's also a download and share all files button. That downloads the entire image of SOLIDWORKS, uh, and then you can create installs off of that download. So you could download it once, throw it on like a shared drive somewhere that everyone can access, or maybe like a thumb drive, pass it around, and everyone can install from that file set instead of every single machine downloading individually. Another thing that's important uh, is knowing what type of license you have uh, because that install, again, can be different based on your license situation. So we've got three different licenses, if you weren't aware, standalone licenses, uh, online licenses, and network licenses. <clears throat> All three of these might be a little bit different as you go through the install process, uh, depending on which one of these you have. So uh, make sure you know. Uh, a big trick is if it's uh, your serial number starts in 9000, then you know you have a, uh, a standalone. And if it's 9010, you know you have a, a network. Or maybe vice versa. I might have gotten that wrong. <laughs> uh, the other thing is not activating. So the first time you launch SolidWorks, it's going to say, hey, uh, do you want to activate now? And this is if you have a standalone license. Uh, or do you want to use the 30-day trial? Some people skip that and they just use the 30-day trial. But then in 30 days, you might run into a situation where now you can't activate. Maybe you're not on the internet or maybe there's something that you could have caught 30 days ago and you still have that window, uh, but it's kind of hard to catch now. Or maybe now we have to do a lot of things on support to help you out. So make sure you activate right away. Don't think that that 30-day trial is going to get you any more time of SolidWorks. Uh, it, your your subscription end date still the same day anyways so it's not going to do anything uh, other than avoid maybe possible complications down the road and then the last thing is not turning on the customer experience improvement program that's in the system options and it's also a checkbox when you're doing the install itself uh, do you want to join the customer experience improvement program? You definitely want to make sure this is on. Um, the big thing that it does is it sends your log files to SolidWorks if there's ever any type of crashing or anything like that. So down the road, if you ever call support and you say, hey, my computer keeps crashing or SolidWorks keeps on uh, quitting and I'm not sure why, uh, we can have access to this huge database of log files uh, if this option is on. If it's off, we'll probably ask you to turn it on and then try to do some manual gathering of data, and I'm sure we can. But this uh, this helps out a lot of things by turning that on. So we want to make sure that's on, and it uh, it can help out a lot down the road, especially if you run into any issues. All right, so that's kind of the, the gist of things that can slow you down. And I hope that uh, if you get anything out of this, out of this webinar today, uh, I hope instead of asking the question, hey, why should I upgrade? I hope you say, why not? <laughs>